to Job, miserable comforts that comfortable uh, comforters that they are. Listen to me. They are a picture of sin, sickness, death. Are you with me here? But gee, come on. Jesus came to give you victory over sin, sickness, death. And the fourth one is poverty. He came to give you victory over those four counselors. Sin, sickness, death, and poverty. Hallelujah. Abraham was a very wealthy man. Job was a very wealthy man. God wants you to be blessed so that you can bless the kingdom. Amen. Woo, awesome. But the only way that you can find true satisfaction, hallelujah, get the victory over sin, sickness, death, and poverty, is to find it in Jesus Christ. Job was a type of Jesus. And I'm glad that he took my boils. I'm glad that he took my sin. I'm glad he took my sickness. I'm glad he took my death. I'm glad he took my poverty. Study. Study the root words of those four men, those four counselors. Sin, sickness, death, and poverty. You'll find all of them in there. So Job, are you with me? So that he got back twice as much as what he was what he lost in the start Jesus got back twice as much because he was willing to die he got a church are you with me here you understand so we've got these two fish here God's awesome I tell you there's no there's nobody like Jesus and the way that the Jews and the Gentiles came into this one body was through a finished work. Through a gaping wound. In Luke chapter 16, we have this, the story, and I believe it to be a true story, of a rich man dying and going to hell. He says that his father was Abraham. So he's a type of Israel. Rich man dies, goes to hell. He lifts up his eyes. He sees Lazarus afar off in Abraham's bosom. In between the two, there's a great gulf fixed. So that the rich man wanted to go into Abraham's bosom. He couldn't pass over into that area. And if, the, if Lazarus wanted to go into where the rich man was, he couldn't pass because there was a gulf there. The rich man's a type of Israel. The rich man said, Father Abraham, Lazarus is a type of the Gentiles. Because while he was alive, the Bible says the dogs came and licked his bone, uh, licked his sores. And the rich man, who's a type of Israel, is asking the, the top Lazarus, the type of the Gentiles, to give him water to drink. There's a Gentile church today that should be preaching the message to Israel and trying to and showing them the way of God. And it's interesting to me that the gulf that separates the two, that separates hell from Abraham's bosom in the Old Testament before Jesus died, it, Abraham's bosom's empty now. But that gulf that's there, you can look up in E.W. Bullinger's Companion Bible. It's a medical term which means a gaping womb. So what God is telling you is the way that gulf is brought back together, the way we're bound back up to Jesus and tied back to him is through a gaping womb. It's the blood that Jesus shed on the cross for us that will take us out of hell and put us into a relationship with God again. So the Jews need Jesus. They need the one who had a gaping womb in his side. They need the one who had nails in his hands and pierced feet. They need him. And the Gentiles need him. He's the only one that can take you out of hell and place you into another realm. So if you are in the church today, you have a responsibility. And that's to preach this gospel to the Jews and the Gentiles. 
Hallelujah. Give God a hand clap of praise. Let's look at this band that ties these two together. Hosea 11. Are y'all thankful for the truth tonight? In Hosea chapter 11. Hallelujah. Woo! Starting to feel liberty of the Holy Ghost. Hosea chapter 11. If you have it, say amen. The first division in that constellation of Pisces, those two fish, is that band. Say a band. Do you see it up there? See the band? Tying it together? That band is tied on the back end of both of those fish, and that band goes over on the neck of the sea monster. It's tied to the back of Leviathan. Uh-oh. I'm telling you, we used to be bound by sin, sickness, death, and poverty. But gee, this is interesting because that band is on the back of that sea monster, Leviathan, which is a picture of Satan. But laid over the top of that band is the foot of Ares the Lamb. So that what you have going on there is you have the devil and Jesus contending for you. There's a battle going on right now. It's a battle for your soul. The devil wants you. The devil lays claim to you. But Jesus, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world, declares that they're my seed. That's my posterity. I purchased them by my blood. So that's why you got the leg of Aries, the lamb laid over on that band because both of them are contending. You understand what I'm telling you right now? The devil is contending for your soul. Jesus is contending for your soul. There's a battle going on. There's a war going, taking place. But I'm here to tell you that the devil's already defeated. And I'm here to tell you that Adam is dead. I'm here to tell you that Jesus put the devil under your feet tonight. And he may try to come and fight and contend for my soul. But I belong to Jesus by the blood. And I think you can understand this consolation as a believer. You know the warfare that's going on. You know how intense it is. He's the accuser of the brethren. He comes to accuse you day and night before the throne of God. But I'm here to tell you, the price has been paid. The prosecuting attorney has lost the case. And I have an advocate, Jesus Christ the righteous. He stands and he pleads my case. And the only document that Jesus needs is my baptismal certificate. The enemy can stand there and accuse me. But you know what? I identified with him in his death when I was water baptized in Jesus' name. And I'm filled with the Holy Ghost. So if the enemy walks up there and says, no, I got a case against that person. Jesus says, no, you don't. I purchased them with my blood. And here's the documentation that they identified with that redemption. See, what you need to understand is the devil knows he's whooped. The devil knows he's defeated. The problem is we don't know it. We profess it, but we really don't know it. So when he comes around and accuses us and contends for us and tries to pull us back into his kingdom, you need to stand up and say, I belong to the Lamb of God. Amen. 
And it's not based on my own goodness or my own righteousness, but it's based on the finished work of the cross, which will produce righteousness, which will produce good works if you've got true faith. Give God praise. So there's a contending going on right now. And I tell you where the battle is. It's between your ears. Because the enemy comes to talk to your woman. The enemy comes to try to confuse your woman. The enemy tries to confuse your soul. But watch this. Watch this. Oh, glory to God. He don't come to talk to my, the new man. He don't come to talk to the last Adam. He talks to the woman. The woman should have said, well, let me ask my husband. Because you're telling me I can be like God. Well, let me ask my husband. You know what her husband would have told her? Her husband would have said, what do you mean be like God? You already are like God. You were created in his image. He don't come to talk to the new man inside of me. He don't come to talk to my spirit, man. He talks to my soul, my woman. That's why you've got to guard your woman. you got to talk to your husband. you got to find out what he says. Because he's going to come and talk to that woman. Now watch, watch. That's his battleground. It's your mind. Hosea, let's look at Hosea 11. Hallelujah. Woo. See, it was said of Simeon there would be no unity in Simeon because of their cruel cruelty. But Jesus came and reversed the curse upon the earth. He's brought in himself one new man. I'm looking at a church that's been unified in the one body. He's reversed the curse. Levi was cursed, but God reversed the curse of Levi. Levi, let me tell you, there was a cursed priesthood, but Jesus came to reverse the curse, and now I can be a king priest under God. So now I'm bound to him. I'm united to Jesus. I'm banded together with him. And I'm a part of a body. And there should be unity in our house. We should understand that we are one. That we are not divided. That we are one. Watch this, okay. Hosea 11. Here's what he says. I think I'll start with verse 1. When Israel was a child. Then I loved him and called my son out of Egypt. Oh, wow. He brought him out of bondage. He was tied to the back of Pharaoh. He was tied to the back of Leviathan. But the blood of the lamb uh, severed the cord. Defeated the bondage. Brought them out of Egypt. Brought them out of slavery. By the blood of a lamb. I've been brought out of bondage. I've been brought out of slavery. By the blood of the lamb of Jesus. And as they called them, so they were from them. They sacrificed unto Balaam and burned incense to graven images. Say graven images. Can I tell you where the image is now? Cast down vain imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of Christ. I tell you where the images are located now. They're located in your mind. I tell you where the high places are now, right here. You need to get a higher thinking. I need to get rid of carnal thinking and get a higher thinking. And cast down imaginations. Go into that grove. Go into that grove that's in your mind. And start pulling down all of those images that are contrary to the Christ that's in you. 
I know what I'm talking about because I am attacked by the enemy in my soul realm. The nations that are against the Christ of God are not just like communistic nations like Russia and China, but there are other nations that are against the Christ of God. They're called imaginations. And the Bible said in the book of Revelation that the Antichrist would create, make an image. The false prophet would make an image to the first beast. I'm here to tell you right now where the image is. It's in your mind. Man, I feel the Holy Ghost. And I'm declaring you right now that greater is he that's in me than he that is in this world. I'm declaring to you right now, don't go by your feelings. Don't go by your emotions. Cast down vain, empty imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of Christ because there's a battle for your soul. Your spirit's all right. Your spirit's saved, but there's a battle for your soul. He said in verse 3, he said, I taught Ephraim. Oh, why you got to teach him? Because you got to show him his newness. You gotta show him he's not an idolater anymore. You gotta show him those high places need to be cast down. You gotta show him those images have to be cast down. You gotta show him that he's been joined to Christ in type. He's been joined to the Lord by the blood of the Lamb, brought him out of Egypt, and called him his son. And by the time I get through preaching this word, some of you who are bound in your thinking, some of you are bound. The Lamb of God's going to sever the cord tonight. He said, I taught Ephraim also to go. Man, we don't know how to go. We don't know how to come in or go out without him teaching us. If you don't know what to do, I'll tell you where to find out what to do. Go to him. If we start relying on our reasoning ability and our own imaginations, we'll make some very bad decisions. We can't go by the way we feel. Our feelings don't feel too good right now. But I'm here to tell you, let him teach you. Let him show you. If you don't know what to do, he can tell you what to do. What you got to do is get your soul in the same place that your spirit is tonight. You got to get your mind in the same place your spirit is tonight. So he's going to teach us. He said, I taught Ephraim also to go, taking them by their arms. But they knew not that I healed them. Did you hear that? They knew not. They didn't know it in their soul, in their mind. God already did the work. It was finished. It was done. When they walked out of Egypt, they were healed by the lamb. When they walked out of Egypt, they had the lamb inside of them. And the Bible said there was not one feeble person among them. God healed every disease that they had as they started coming out of Egypt. He healed them by the lamb. He said, I healed them, but they didn't know it. I'm here to tell you tonight, your soul doesn't know. You've got to show her you've been healed. You've got to show her you're no longer bound by sin, no longer bound by death, no longer bound by sickness, and no longer bound by poverty. You've got to show her your newness. You gotta teach her. You gotta get her in the same place the spirit is. Your spirit is saved, but your soul is being saved. Your spirit is saved, but your mind has to be renewed. That's where the battle is tonight. 
There's a battle for my mind. There's a battle for this preacher's mind. There's a battle for every one of your minds. Who are you going to join yourself with? Are you going to rejoin with the devil that's been defeated? Or are you going to be bound to Jesus? I don't know about you, but right now I'm telling you, I came to have church. I don't know about you right now, but I'm not going to let the enemy get the victory over me. I don't know about you, but I'm not going to let my mind get messed with. So he said, I taught Ephraim. Ooh. Had to teach him, man. They got, they're healed, but they don't know they're healed. You're healed, don't know you're healed, man. Walk around. Your emotions tell you you're no different than you were before. That you're the same person. That's a lie. I'm not the same person I was before. There's a battle for your soul. So he goes on. He said, I, he said, I healed. He said, I drew them with cords. I drew them with bands. <laughs> Woo! With cords of a man. Say cords of a man. With bands of love. And I was to them as they that take off the yoke on their jaws and they meet unto them. He said they didn't know how to walk. They didn't know how to go. Had to teach them that they were healed. How to show them how to walk. They would literally do this. They would get cords tied onto the arms of their children. And, and as those children would try to walk, they kind of hold them up, you know. And kind of train them with, with bands, literally train them and show them how to walk. And that's what he's doing with his bands of love. He's showing me how to walk. And if I stumble, he pulls me back up and says, son. He said, I know you stumbled right then, but I'm going to hold you back up with these cords of love. And I'm going to teach you. I'm going to show you. Hallelujah. God, somebody. And I can go that way, or I can go another way. Let's look at this, all right? This band that we're talking about, Psalm 32, 9. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I'm feeling all right now. Psalm 32, 9. Before you, before you <laughs> read that. I want to read to you Psalm 34 in verse 2. Here's what David said. My soul shall make her boast in the Lord. Every man here has a woman in you. And every woman here has a man in you. Because this, come on, the spirit that's in you is called it's used, it's called a masculine term. So if you've got a spirit in you, I don't care if you're male or female, you've got a man inside of you. That's why you're called a new man. Even women are called new men. So every woman's got a man in you. Hello, those of you who have Jesus in you. And the spirit, your human spirit, has been joined to him. And that human spirit that's been joined to him is also a man. So, you got a man and a woman in you. It doesn't matter if you're a man or a woman. David said, my soul shall make her boast in the Lord. I'm telling you, the battle is right here. It's for your mind. Why God's got to teach us. He's got to show us. We don't even know what he's done for us, man. My spirit knows it, but my mind don't know it. That's where the war is. So I can, come on, I can yield to my newness. Come on, are you with me? Or I can yield to the carnal nature. Wow, that's pretty heavy stuff. Well, let's look at this in Psalm 32, verse 9. 
Aren't you happy you know Jesus? Be ye not as the horse. And if that wasn't bad enough, he said, or as the mule. Which have no understanding. Whose mouth must be held in with a bit. And a bridle or a band. The same word that's used there in that constellation band is the same word for bridle here. He said, don't be like a horse and don't be like a mule that has to have a bridle in their mouth. Lest they come near unto thee. Many sorrows shall be to the wicked, but he that trusteth in the Lord. Mercy shall come pass him about. Don't be like a mule. Don't be like a donkey. Don't have the head of a horse. Don't have the head of a mule. Don't be stubborn. Don't be carnal. Lord of God. Well, it's very interesting to me that when there was when famine, say famine, in Samaria, Second King, uh, Second King six and seven. Read it. In Samaria, when there was famine in the land, they sold the head of an ass and some doves' dung, and at the same time, they were trying to go after the head of the prophet. They would rather have the head of an ass and have a little dub dug and dub dung is where the dove used to be i'm telling you god's a moving god and there's a lot of people who are where god used to be but you stopped moving with god a long time ago so now what you're after now what you got is what the bird left behind what the dove left behind and that's dub dung and a lot of you want the ass's head instead of what's in the prophet's head you want to go your own corner away like an ass. Whoa, come on, somebody. Woo, glory to Jesus. But he said, don't be like a horse and don't be like a mule that has to have a bridle placed in its lip. Don't get corner minded. Don't go after the ass's head. Ooh, God's awesome. If that wasn't enough, <laughs> ooh, I'm feeling good now. <laughs> He's such an awesome God. He'll give you victory over death, hell, and the grave. He'll prepare a table for you in the, in the wilderness. It doesn't matter what's coming against you. There's anointing that destroys the yoke. If you just get in that anointing, get your soul where your spirit is, there'll be a destroying of a yoke. But there's a, there's a man by the name of Saul who ended up in catastrophe. When you first find out about Saul, you know what he's doing? He's chasing asses. His daddy's asses got away. And so Saul goes running after asses. What's different about David was David wasn't running after asses. David was keepers of sheep. So as a shepherd, I'm going to tell you right now, I'm not going to run after carnal people. I'm not going to run after ass heads. Because if you run after the colonel, what's going to happen is you're going to run down. You're going to run out. So I'm not going to run after the asses. I'm going to shepherd sheep. And if you're a sheep tonight, you've got a shepherd. But if you're an ass, you're carnally minded, and you're stubborn, this shepherd is not going to chase you. I'm not going to run when you run off. If you run off, I'm not going to run you down. I'm on a shepherd's sheep. 
give God praise in this house. I feel the Holy Ghost in this place. So don't get the head of a horse and don't get the head of an ass. Don't buy it. Don't chase it. Be a sheep. Be willing to be shepherd. Ooh, God's awesome. Give the Lord a hand clap of praise that I feel the Holy Ghost in this house. <clears throat> Lord is coming to this place to set the captive free. He's coming to this place to give you victory over the powers of darkness. That have caused you to begin to walk in your vain imaginations. To begin to set idols up in your groves once again. But the Lord is in this house right now. And he wants to take your head off if it's an ass's head. If it's an ass's head or a horse's head, he can take it off and give you the mind of Christ. I made up my mind. I'm going to stop beating my head against the wall for ass's heads. But I'm going to give my heart to sheep. Ha! You're looking at a pastor that means business right now. And if it feels like there's famine in the land, a famine of bread, you know by the time you get to the end of that story, those people who listen to the, the head of the prophet, uh, the Bible said, he said, by this time tomorrow, there's going to be bread and barley in the house. Four helpless lepers say, why are we sit here till we die? Glory to God. And based on a finished work, they get up. They don't even have to fight. They walk over there based on the word that's already been spoken. Walk in up there and pick up spoils. Didn't even have to lift a hand to fight because the battle had already been won. And all they had to do was go pick up the spoils. And the word of the prophet came to pass the next day. They had bread and barley in the house. Bread and barley in the house. Wheat and barley in the house. Wheat is planted at Passover and harvested at Pentecost. Barley is planted and raised and harvested in the resurrection time. Come on. So you've got wheat and barley. You've got death and resurrection. So that what was planted on Passover is manifested Pentecost. And it's messed up, it's manifest in the seed of God. Hello, seed of God. I'd rather have the mind of God in a finished work and just go pick up the spoils then I would go after an ass's head and some dove's tongue. I'd rather have, come on, wheat and barley, the death and resurrection of Jesus any day. Hallelujah. Well, let's go on down to the next one. Hallelujah. God's awesome, isn't he? I'm telling you what God's trying to do right now. He's trying to give you victory over your soul. In fact, he's trying to save your soul. He's trying to get you to the throne room. Because in a sense, the harvest of Pentecost, the wheat, and the harvest of the barley on Resurrection Sunday, come on, are a picture of the first fruits of a greater harvest called Tabernacles. God, I, I wish you could hear this right now. God wants you to get into the most holy place. He wants you to make it to tabernacles. Passover, Pentecost are just steps on the way to when you have the full harvest. He wants you to get to the throne room. That's why we're going to talk about the king. Let me tell you a little bit about him. 
a human figure holding a branch. Well, I wonder who this king is who's called the branch. <laughs> Give the Lord a hand clap of praise. If you can't get this message, I'm here to tell you this message is ordained of God for some of you. I'll tell you tonight, it's ordained for me. Choose you this day whom you will serve. If God be God, serve him. If Baal be God, serve him. But don't stand in the middle. Why hold you between two opinions? He's called the branch. Say the branch. It also means one who comes as in a circle. He's coming again. He's coming ultimately physically, but right now he's come again. I said the king is in the house right now. The one sitting on the throne is called the branch. His leg looks like the leg of an animal. So what we find about this king is that he's the one sitting on the throne. He's the king, but he's also the lamb at the same time. He's God, and he's the lamb of God at the same time. Give me these names. Ooh, some, and these are stars in this constellation. Which means comes as in a circle. We already talked about that eternal. He's going to come. He's coming right now. I want to just share this with you. If you need something from God right now, you know how he comes to you? He comes by way of his promise. So all you got to do is stand on a promise. Get on that circle and stand on a promise. And he'll make his way to you. Because he comes by way of a promise. He comes as in a circle. Treading underfoot. Say treading underfoot. Crushing the head of the serpent. Also the Arab. And these, when I say treading underfoot, these are stars. A come in a circle is a star. A treading underfoot is a star. The Arab name, coming quickly as in a circle. Aren't you glad he's going to come quick? See, some of you right now, you know where your mind is? About how tired you are. That's where your mind is. Your mind is somewhere else. Your mind is about how tired you are. Your mind is, but you're not here. That's the problem. That's why the enemy can just have his way with your mind. Because when it's time for God to speak to you and give you a word in the house, you're somewhere else. You've run off. You're like a wild ass. And I don't care if you like it or you don't like it. I'll look you right in the face and tell you that. Some of you better hear this message. You're not going to make it a year if you don't hear it. in church man there's a lot of people right now who are building their church by humanistic philosophy they are trying to appeal to the flesh they are trying to make the flesh feel good I have somebody in my own family who is trying to build a church on a humanistic philosophy but I'm here to tell you right now if you're watching my camera you better build it on the redemptive work of Jesus Christ you cannot build it on the solical realm the builder's flesh and the soul, the soul will be lost if you let it have its way. If you're trying to build your life on a foundation other than the word of Jesus Christ, your house is going to fall and great is going to be the fall thereof. Oh, 
thank you. <laughs> Matching my tie. I'm telling you, if you don't know where we are right now, Babylon is raging, confusion of mind is heavy. You've got to get your mind where your spirit is. Say, it also means, there's a star that means coming in a circle, round, means the Redeemer also. So you can't miss who it is. He's the branch. He's coming as in a circle. He's the redeemer of our souls. You can't miss who that king sitting on that throne is. And he's also got the leg of a lamb on him. I'm glad I know he's not the second person in a fictitious trinity. I'm glad I know that Jesus is God and man at the same time. God is awesome. It means the one who bruises and breaks. Wow. It's been taken by the, uh, the Arabs. It's taken to be as a shepherd. He's going to, he already defeated the devil for you. If you're a sheep, he came to set you free. If you're a sheep, he came to redeem you. And I got good news for you. If you got the head of an ass, he has the ability to take a stubborn mule and turn you into a sheep. Look at the prophecies concerning the sons of Israel. He's able to break you. That's why he said, go get the coat, the foal of an ass. He said, I can tame her. I can ride her. I can break her. I can redeem her. I'm telling you something right now. I feel something powerful moving in this house. When you're weak, then are you strong? now I've never felt weaker in my life but when I'm weak then am I strong and also, I know some of y'all don't want to hear that you know you don't like to hear that but that's the reality honey but there's something very powerful in this house right now his name is Jesus He's the one who bruises, who breaks. He destroys the yoke. If you're tied up to the wrong one right now, he can break that, bo he can break that bondage. He can destroy that yoke. He can give you a brand new conscience. Only Jesus can give you a new conscience. Some of us need a new, brand new conscience. We're carrying a lot of baggage with us. In the Greek, he's called the branch and also the king. Aren't you glad you know him? Aren't you glad that he was bound so that you could be loosed? I tell you what he wants in the people right now. He wants somebody that will reflect the throne. He wants somebody to be a manifestation of the kingdom. He wants somebody to be a manifestation of the king. He's looking for a queen. And you can be a Vashti if you want to. You can be a cosmic counterfeit if you want to. Or you can be an Esther that walks forward and puts the crown royal on her head and manifests the crown royal. Come on, somebody. This king has got his scepter pointed. I said he's got his scepter pointed. 
Remember Esther? She didn't know if she's going to die or live, but she said, I'm going to go into the most holy place. I'm going to go right into the throne room right now. If I die, I die. If I perish, I perish. But I'm going into the most holy place. Without invitation, I'm going in there. As soon as she walks in there, she didn't know what she was going to get. He did, though. The king knew. Put out a scepter, a royal scepter. Said, come on over here, Esther, and I'll give you half of the kingdom. I'll tell you what your king wants to do for you. He wants to give you the kingdom. And this king has got his scepter, and it's pointed over not towards Andromeda. Because Andromeda has to become Cassiopeia. Cassiopeia. Cassiopeia is seen there as a queen crowned. And the king's got his scepter pointed over to the queen. Cassiopeia is a picture of Andromeda, the bound woman. She has become Cassiopeia. I don't want to counterfeit. I want to be the real thing. I don't want to be Vashti. I want to be Esther. Because Esther is the one that God's going to give the kingdom to. And that is in the third dimension. It's not out of court. It's not Pentecost. It's most holy place. He that dwelleth, he that dwelleth, he that dwelleth, not place of visit. He that dwelleth, in the secret place. That's the throne room. That's where the scepter is. He that dwelleth in the secret place, a person that lives there, shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. You need to get your woman in the most holy place and don't let nothing take her out of the heavens. Let's go to Andromeda and I'm going to close in about two hours. And drop it, it means the chained woman. Psalm 34, verse 2. David said, My soul shall make her boast in the Lord. This Andromeda is a picture of a woman. It's a picture of a church. It's a picture of your soul individually. It's a picture of you individually. She seemed bound with chains. Come on, somebody. Oh, glory to God. Let me give you some of these names for her. The Hebrew means the chained one. There's a star in her, Perseus. The stretched out. Now listen very carefully. Another star in her means the afflicted. Another star in her means the weak. Another star means the bound. Another, come on. Also the word for that is the afflicted one. Another word, another star there is from the grave, from Sheol, from Hades. That's where she came from. Ha. There's a great goal fixed. There's a gaping wound. Well, she got it. We're going to find out how she got out of hell, man. I think I already told you. Also, another star means from the grave, from shore, from Hades. It means to be delivered. <laughs> It means to the broken down. Oh, yeah. It means struck down. It, there's another star in her means uh, the assembly, the assembled, the abundance. <laughs> another star, the Greek, uh, that star is Andromedia, which is the name of this constellation, it means to be set free from death. Another star means to be bound. So what I'm trying to tell you is this chained one, this stretched out one, this afflicted one, this weak one, this bound one, this afflicted one, this one that was in the grave, this one that was in the Sheol, this one that was in Hades, this one that's broken down, this one that's struck down, is going to be delivered. She's going to be assembled in abundance. She's going to be set free. She's going to be... Cassiopeia the queen. 
there's going to be a people that make it to that dimension in the last days. That is what Jesus is after. This is interesting to me that this is the seventh constellation, which speaks of the seventh day, which speaks of the kingdom of God, which speaks of the glory of God, which speaks of reflecting his glory, which speaks of reflecting his kingship. And there's a lot of you who feel broken down, struck down, afflicted, and all kinds of stuff. But I'm going to tell you there's a deliverer in the house. I'm going to tell you that there's somebody that can assemble you because he has the ability to remember you. In the Gospels, in the Gospels, there's a woman who's bowed down. She's had an infirmity for 18 years, 666. She is in bondage because the number 18 is the number of bondage. All she can do is see the earth man. All she can see is the dust of the earth because she's bowed down and she's brought low. And the Bible says she could in no wise lift up herself. She couldn't help herself. She couldn't get down. All she would do was look down. She was focused on hell. She was focused on the earth. She was, the devil had her whipped. And the old Adam was dominating her. She had the mark of the beast in her mind. And she couldn't raise herself up. But Jesus, the Bible said, raised her up. So that instead of looking toward the earth, she could now get her mind in the heavens. Now she could look heavenward. And the scripture says all of this took place on the seventh. That's the seventh. It took place on the Sabbath. You know how she rested? You know how she entered into rest and got delivered from that affliction and that bondage whom Satan had bound 18 years? You know how she did it? By the power of Jesus. All this self-help stuff, all this psychological stuff, that's just what it is. The only thing that can get you out of your dilemma, get you out of your bondage, get you out of your being struck down, is Jesus. And when you really start going through it up here, the enemy will come to you and tell you, you need to go to a psychologist now. You're so messed up. You're so bad. I'm talking to church people. I'm not talking to people in the world. I'm talking to you. You don't need a psychologist. You need Jesus Christ in your life. Some of you need to get prayed through tonight. Some of you need to get filled with the Holy Ghost. Some of you need to get your soul where your spirit is. So all this was done on the Sabbath. Now watch this. In Luke chapter 4. I think I'll read this to y'all. I'm almost through in about an hour. I'm not in a hurry. I just have a lot to say. Luke chapter 4. That's in the Bible. Are you sure? New Testament. <laughs> Luke 4. Watch this. Ooh, hallelujah. Man, I'll tell you, there's some powerful stuff. In this. You feel like a slave. He's trying to tell you you're going to reign as a king or a queen. He's going to bring you out of Egypt. He's going to bring you out of that bondage. He's going to bring you out of that slavery. He's going to bring you out of that Babylonian captivity. God. I'm armed with a promise tonight. Look forward. Watch what he says. 
This woman has rest. Oh, thank God for my woman having rest. She is so earthbound and so struck down. But thank God that this woman can be saved and delivered. She don't have to stay bound any longer. Thank God my soul can be saved. Thank God I can get my soul where my spirit is. And I can rest. Look for What's this? She was a daughter of Abraham. Which means she kept the Sabbath day. Every Sabbath day. But she was still bound. And hadn't experienced rest. Because you don't find rest in a day. You find it in a Jesus. The day just pointed to him. Now watch, watch this. You don't believe me, do you? Luke 4, verse 18, the Lord said this. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. Because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel. He's anointed me to preach the gospel. I'll tell you tonight, the Spirit of the Lord is upon you. I'll tell you tonight, the Spirit of the Lord is upon you. And He has anointed you, and it's the anointing that destroys the bondage. It makes slaves into kings. It makes Andromedas into queens. You don't have to leave here the same way you came. You can leave here flying high tonight. You can leave here victorious. You can leave here resting. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. Because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. Say the poor in spirit shall see God. He hath sent me to heal the broken hearted. She's tore down. She's broke down. She's bowed down. She's in bondage. But the Bible said he came to heal the broken hearted. That's your soul. This is your soul. It's your woman. To preach deliverance to the bound. Preach deliverance to the captives. <laughs> That's why that woman got lifted up. Now she can look up. Now she can look up. You can't look up until you... you if you're not lifted up, you can't look up. People can walk up to you and say, Look up, brother. Be encouraged, brother. Be lifted up, brother. But you can't be unless you're first lifted up. You can't look up. But let the Spirit of God come and let Him break that bondage and give you the ability to start looking up. Then you can look up because He lifted you up. In, in fact, the first constellation we looked at, Pisces, it literally means to be upheld. And recovering of sight to the blind to set at liberty them that are bruised to preach the acceptable year of the Lord that is the year of Jubilee which means this he's more than just a seventh day he's seven times seven Jubilee is announced with the sounding of a ram's horn. A ram died to bring rest. A lamb died to bring restoration. So through the sounding of a trumpet or a pure word that goes forth, it's sounding right now. 
And I'm declaring to you right now, he's not just a Sabbath day. He is seven times seven. He's better than the Sabbath day. Now listen to me. Listen, listen. What does he say about this year of Jubilee, the acceptable year of the Lord? This thing that's been announced with the death of a, a, a ram, you know, and the sounding of a trumpet. What? He said, he closed the book. Watch. Watch this. He closed the book, and the Bible said, and gave it again to the minister. He put it in the hands of a fivefold ministry. And sat down. It is finished. Before it's ever done, it is finished. He sat down, put it in the hands of a ministry. Now watch this. And the eyes of all them that were in the synagogue were fastened on him. <laughs> Are y'all getting this? Uh, am I the only one that's about to jump out of my skin? God, I can identify with that woman, man. <laughs> Rather struck down, pulled down, all, I can identify with her. I mean, she's, she's been so ravished. Ravaged? Ravaged? That part of her clothes have been ripped off of her body, exposing part of her body. It's exposing part of her productivity. God have mercy. She's been ravaged. But this is the good news. Oh, y'all got quiet on that one. Hallelujah. All their eyes were fastened on him. That's the point. And he began to say unto them, say he began to say unto them, this day is this scripture fulfilled. I'm the one that it was pointing to. The one you have your eyes on is the one that was talking about this day is this scripture fulfilled in your ears I'm not just a Sabbath day I'm seven times a Sabbath day this day is the scripture fulfilled in your ears hello Simeon this is what you need to hear Simeon It's done. Hello, give God praise. <clears throat> go to Matthew. <coughs> no, 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 no. I can't go to Matthew yet. Go to Romans. <laughs> Romans 7. I wonder who she was bound to. Hallelujah. Well, first of all, she used to be married to another man. Brother David. She used to be married to another man. You used to be married to another man. Brother David used to be married to another man. Yes, you were. You were married to the old Adam. Don't you argue with me. <laughs> you were married to Adam. You were bound to the law of your husband. You were walking in the condemnation of the law. But something happened to this woman. <laughs> Some of you women right now said, yeah, I could identify to her. <laughs> oh, come on. It's not talking about natural marriage, I hate to tell you. <laughs> <laughs> Romans 7 are you with me here's what it says Romans 7 
It says, Know ye not, brethren, for I speak to them that know the law, how that the law hath dominion over a man as long as he liveth. Praise the Lord. Excuse me. I got to fix my tie. <laughs> I'm a mess, man. <laughs> you know, I clean up pretty good. By the time I get through, though. <laughs> the law has to be an over man as long as he lives. To the woman which hath an husband is bound. Come on, you can't be tired on me yet. Is bound by the law of her husband. I used to be married to the old Adam. I was bound by the old Adam. I was bound by the law to her husband, so long as he liveth. But if the husband be dead, she is loose from the law of her husband. It does not say she's loose from the law of Moses. It says she's loose from the law of her husband. And the law of her husband, her husband's first name was Adam. But if the husband be dead, I'm telling you, Adam's dead. <laughs> you are blessed with all spiritual blessing in heavenly places. The word blessed means eulogy. I'm eulogizing you tonight. I'm telling you, you're dead. <laughs> but if the husband be dead, <laughs> she is loosed. <laughs> From the law of her husband. So that if while her husband liveth, she be married to another man, she shall be called an adulteress. But if her husband be dead, she is free from that law, so that she is no adulteress, though she be married to another man. Wherefore, my brethren, you also are become dead to the law of what? The law of your husband. By the body of Christ, that you should be married to another, even to him who is raised from the dead, that we should bring forth fruit unto God. I'm no longer bound to the old Adam. I'm no longer bound to the condemnation of the law. The ceremonial law has found its fulfillment, its ultimate in Jesus Christ. And by the power of the Spirit, I seek to obey His Word. Amen? Give God praise. Go to Matthew 1. <coughs> Matthew chapter 1, verse 16. Are y'all still awake? Now as you turn there, I got to tell you a real fast story. Revelation chapter 12. The Bible tells us there was a sign in the heavens. The Bible said there was a woman. Clothed with the sun, moon under her feet, crowned with 12 stars, 12 constellations. gives birth to a man child. You with me? Who's that woman? My soul shall make her boast in the Lord. I know one thing, she's typically of your mind, your soul. Keep your woman in the heavens. Keep dwelling in a secret place of the Most High God. You got to keep her there. Don't let her get earthbound. You'll lose your soul if you start going by your feelings. First thing you got to do is get born again. That's your spirit. Your spirit gets immediately saved. You got to get born again in the water and the spirit. Then your mind's got to be saved. It's got to be renovated. Romans 12 says, renew your mind or renovate your mind. Okay, so she's in the heavens, clothed with the sun. She's got a revelation of a new day. The moon's under her feet. She's crowned with 12 stars. She's pregnant, gives birth to a full grown man child, which is the nature of Jesus Christ. That's what he wants you to do. He wants you to manifest himself, his nature. But she's what? Let's, let's read it. Come on. And then we'll go to Matthew 1, okay? Come on. Come on, somebody. Pilate, give God praise. Stand up and give him some worship. <laughs> some of you are acting like it's 12 o'clock. What's wrong with you? Get your woman in the heavens. 
<laughs> Revelation 12. Okay, let's see what happens to this woman. Glory to Jesus. The Bible tells us. Verse 6, And the woman fled into the wilderness. Takes you back to Egyptian deliverance. By the blood of a lamb. And they're walking through a wilderness. <laughs> hallelujah, hallelujah. Some of y'all looking for a, if you're looking for a new church, I'm going to give you the excuse to find one. I'm going to keep you till one. <laughs> Tired of dealing with asses heads anyway. I know you don't like me. I don't care. Yeah, you get offended. You know what's going to happen to you? That rock. Listen, you get offended at the Word of God. That rock is going to fall on you and ground you to powder. You got one or two choices. You can fall on that rock and humble yourself, or that rock will fall on you and grind you to powder. That's what God's Word says. And Jesus came to set you free and to save you. But you have to make the choice. The woman fled in the wilderness and wished she had the place prepared of God that they should feed her there a thousand two hundred three score days. And there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon. The dragon fought against... There's war going on. All right? The woman's in the wilderness and there's war going on in the heavens. Now watch this. This is interesting to me. Verse 11. They overcame him by the blood of the Lamb, by the word of their testimony, and they loved not their lives unto the death. They got the victory over the sea monster. They got the victory over his bondage. By the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. Okay, so she's taken out of the wilderness, right? Okay, watch this. This woman in Romeda is a picture of this woman in the wilderness. This woman in the wilderness sends you back to the Old Testament type. Israel's walking through the wilderness on their way to the promised land. They've come out of bondage by the blood of the Lamb. Numbers 33 tells us they made 42 stops. This woman is in the wilderness for 42 months or 1,260 days. And what she's doing is, there's the Bible said, that she's fed in the wilderness. So this woman is feeding on the men of the Lamb because all the 42 stops that Israel made on their way to the promised land were stops that taught them about the Lamb that had already died. So you get the victory over the enemy by the word of your testimony, by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of your testimony. She's been feeding on the message of Christ. Now, having said that, go to Matthew 1. What's this? Numbers 33. 42 stops they made. They come to the promised land. Enter into the promised land. Okay, Matthew 1. <clears throat> Where's that at? Is that in the New Testament? <clears throat> Somebody told me the other day, uh, you say, they said, you're an Old Testament preacher. <laughs> I said, let me tell you something. I'm an old and I'm a new. I preach everything, man. I preach the old and the new. I, I don't just preach the new. I preach the old and the new. You can't understand the new without the old. The old is not obsolete. It's giving you pictures of Jesus. So, but we're looking at Matthew right now. Okay. It's early. Look at your woman and say, it's early. <laughs> Matthew 1, 16, And Jacob begat Joseph, the husband of Mary, of whom was born Jesus. Who is called Christ. You count this genealogy right here. Beginning with, are you with me? Starting with David. 
you go all the way down to Jesus when you get to Jesus you've made 41 stops but she's in the wilderness 42 months and Israel made 42 stops in the pro to the promised land count them I've done it Jesus is the 41st stop Christ is the 42nd stop and what he's showing you is there is a seed God's seed his anointed body is the 42nd stop it is a people who they are a people of promise they are the seed of God they are the kingdom of God because Matthew is the gospel of the kingdom and she doesn't look like she's reigning right now but she in the spirits reigning over sin sickness death and poverty who is she's a promised seed give God praise now go to 117 117 and I'm going to close. So all the generations. I've been regenerated. I've been born again of the water and the spirit. You're looking at a man that's been regenerated. <clears throat> I got royal blood flowing in my veins. I might look like her. All ravaged and struck down, pulled down, laid low, bound. I might look that way to you. I got royal blood flowing in my veins. I got the blood of Jesus flowing in my veins. In fact, I'll tell you a little story. Daniel was taken into captivity, Babylonian captivity. Babylon means confusion. He was taken into captivity. But yet, in captivity, he was the royal seed. You're in a Babylonian system of confusion, but you're royal seed. <laughs> Mary, at the time this gospel was written, who is the mother of Jesus, <laughs> glory to God. Where'd she go? Thank you. <laughs> Andromeda disappeared. <laughs> Mary at the time the gospel of Matthew was written was in a sense a slave to the Roman government. And Mary, if you don't know it, could have been a queen. And Joseph, her husband, could have been a king. <coughs> so we've got royal seed in captivity. But I want to tell you the way it is in Christ. In Christ you reign. In Christ you look like that woman bound and defeated. But in Christ you reign. In Christ you're royal seed. In Christ you're in Babylon. Uh, in Christ, you're, right now you're in Babylon, but in Christ you're in the kingdom. Awesome, isn't it? Isn't it also interesting that Esther comes forth during the captivity? I'll tell you what God's going to do in the midst of all of your chaos and all this slavery that you in the midst of. He's going to raise up a church. That are going to come forth like Esther who are going to be intercessors. Who are going to bring down the Hamans. And the Hamans are going to be defeated on a tree. She didn't just come forth to be pretty. She came forth with a purpose in the kingdom to bring down a Haman. Okay. I'm looking at a bunch of slaves made kings. Come on, I need to feel some of that. Yeah, man. God is awesome. So 
So here we go, verse 17. So all the generations from Abraham to David are 14 generations. And from David until the carrying away into Babylonian, Babylon are 14 generations. And from the carrying away into Babylon unto Christ are 14 generations. That's 42 generations. 14 plus 14 plus 14 are 3 times 14. Last time I counted equals 42. She was in the wilderness 42 months feeding on the message of Christ. Israel came out of Egyptian captivity and bondage. And in the 42nd stop they were in the promised land. But notice it says 42 to Christ. It doesn't say Jesus. It says Christ. Count them. And, and you don't get to but the 42nd one until you get to Jesus is the 41st and Christ is the 42nd. He's talking about a body. So that we start out with David. Man reigning. Then we see man in Babylonian captivity. Then we see in Jesus. Man reigning again. So when you feel cast down, bow down, bow, and your woman is confused, feed on the message of Christ. Get in your Bible. Read it over and over and over and over. And you'll find out that in the midst of what feels to be like such a great captivity and bondage, that you are genuinely Cassiopeia. Because he's got his scepter pointed over to a queen. And Andromeda, hallelujah, hello Andromeda, you're going to turn into Cassiopeia. You will become an Esther. <laughs> I'm telling you. And I know it's a struggle, and I know it's a battle, and I know you're in raging <laughs> confusion. I know. But I'm here to tell you that it's the anointing that destroys the It's Jesus that raises me up, teaches my hands to walk, Shows me where to go, how to go about it. What I have to do is simply trust in Him. Because I've got to get a renovation of my mind. My mind is messed up. My mind's confused. He's the answer. Give God some praise. Why don't you lift your hands and love the Lord? You need healing right now. The Lord wants to show you you're healed. The problem is you don't know it. The problem is I don't know it. If we only knew how delivered we were, if we only knew how free we were, everything around us and even our minds are telling us otherwise but I'm here to tell you tonight you're free Jesus I thank you right now for your spirit you're so awesome but Andy give me a song we're just going to love him right now <clears throat> I want to tell you he knows the battle that you are in he knows that we're in a, we are in a foreign country. We're in a foreign land, but He's able to give us a song. He's able to give you a new song. New song is the song of the finished work. He's able to give you a song. And some of you have been struggling so long and have been in pain so long that you don't even know what it's like to feel good. But Jesus, 
can come right now where you are. In fact, he's already come. And he sat down. <laughs> he's telling you, come unto me all ye that labor and are heavy laden. And, and I will give you rest. Thank you, Jesus, for your delivering power tonight. As we leave this house. We know that something has happened in the spirit. And that something is. We're no longer bound. We've been set free. Thank you, Jesus. I don't deserve it. I'm ravaged. Ravaged. I'm just undeserving. But tonight, Lord. It's not about my own righteousness. It's about imputed righteousness that has been given to me. I love you, Jesus, with all of my heart. I praise you. You're awesome. You're awesome. You are awesome. You have an opportunity right now. To be like one of those lepers. Who was in a place. Who said. What do we have to lose? Lord God I love you tonight. I thank you for the victory. I thank you for your word tonight. I thank you for your spirit. Thank you for the blood. Hallelujah. I worship you. I thank you for your word tonight that sets the captive free. I thank you that there's been a sounding of a trumpet tonight. I'm looking at a promised seed. I'm looking at royal seed. I'm looking at a kingdom seed tonight. You are my king. You are my God. You are my savior. I declare it. I will not receive what the enemy said to me. Lord, I love you. Come on, worship you. Enjoy the Lord. The joy of the Lord is your strength tonight. Enjoy him. Don't leave this place bound. Be like the Shulamite who came out of Egypt, went to the mountain of Bethar, the mountain of separation. Make it to the hill of frankincense and myrrh. Till the shadows flee away. Get there. Get your soul where your spirit is. Get that dark cloud out of your life. Get the shadow out of your life. Oh.